November 8th at 6 o'clock p.m. Can we get a roll call, please? Here. 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 First item is approval of the agenda. Move to approve. Sergeant. Dane and Jason. Any discussion on the agenda? Okay. Seeing none, council please vote. Aye. The agenda is approved. Takes us into public hearing. Um, public hearing on wastewater treatment facility phase three plans and specifications and award contract. So we'll go ahead and open the public hearing on phase three wastewater treatment facility. Can we receive any comments? And is there anyone here to speak in the public forum? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close. Uh, her, the public hearing, I guess. We'll go ahead and close the public hearing um, and move into resolution number 24, 2021, 2022, resolution finally approving and confirming plan specifications, form of contract and estimate of cost for the wastewater treatment facility phase three project. Move to approve. Second. Jason and Sandy, any discussion? Jeremy, you happy with all that? Plans and everything? No further discussion. Council, please vote. Aye. Okay. That is approved. It takes us to number three consideration of bids for the wastewater treatment facility phase three project, which is in your packet, um, which includes resolution number 25, 2021, 2022, a resolution awarding contract for the wastewater treatment facility phase three project. So this is a little different than what we normally do. We normally say we approve the number one choice or whatever, but this one we're just awarding it to, I can't remember their name now. Boomerang. Boomerang, there it is. So is that what the resolution says, correct? Thanks, Sarah. Answer questions too. Yeah, the um, recommendation is to award to the apparent low bidder, which is Boomerang Corporation. Of the six bids that were received, they were the apparent low. Mm -hmm. uh, they appeared to have a responsive, responsible bid. Okay. That bid was higher than we anticipated. What is the, what is, where does that put us overall on the overall cost of everything compared to what we had planned? Well, I can tell you that right now with phases one through three, the total would be 44 million, 64,000 and change. Um, we we'll go back and look to see what our opinion of cost was for phases one and two. But I do know that phase two came in a couple million below our estimate. That's what I thought so, too. I believe based off our estimates, we're still, close. Yeah. we're still a little bit actually under uh, okay. through phases one through three. No, it was 44, 45 right there. Okay. Number 25. I'll second. Jason, Brian, discussion on the resolution. Well, thanks for the clarification. You're welcome. Okay. And seeing none, council, please vote. Aye. Okay, that is approved. Thanks, Mike. And that takes us into the next public hearing for the CDBG microenterprise grant. Public hearing for citizen participation requirements regarding the city's CDBG microenterprise assistance application for working capital equipment, building improvements, and related costs necessary to sustain and expand a microenterprise. Did you receive any comments? Okay. Is there anyone here to speak in that public hearing? 
Alex Logan, Region 12. Okay. Yeah, if you'd you like to head up to the microphone there. Mm -hmm. I'm Alex Foley from Region 12 Council of Governments. Uh, I will be the one that is putting the application together and submitting it. Uh, this is a public hearing for uh, said application. Uh, we look to get um, feedback from the public, uh, any questions they have. Um, as of right now, the total project cost is estimated to be $995,911 uh, with CDBG award of 498300 uh, the remaining cost of the project could be $497,611. Each business is responsible for covering the remaining amount of their project. It is also anticipated that the City of Nevada, in partnership with Nevada Economic Development Council, will contribute $50,000 in funds to its application. Uh, as of right now, the application will be submitted on or before December 31st, 2021. Uh, there is no hard deadline for this application. I understand the sooner the better. My anticipation is to have this submitted the first or second week of December. The amendment of the CDBG program is that funds must be used for the projects benefiting low to moderate income persons. For this specific project, each business must be owned by someone who is LMI or create LMI jobs as a result of the project. It's noted that no businesses or persons will be displaced as a result of this project. Uh, are there any other questions from the council or the public for? Okay. Thank you. Okay, then at this time, we'll go ahead and close that public hearing and move on to the consent agenda. Any item may be removed for separate consideration. So approve the consent agenda. Second. Kane and Ryan. Any discussion on consent? Seeing none, council, please vote. Aye. Okay, what one more Aye. Okay. And that's approved. Takes us into public forum. Time set aside for comments from the public on topics of city business other than those listed on the agenda. No action may be taken. And we will start with a swearing in with Director Martinez. Good evening. It's a little unusual. Uh, normally I have the uh, new officer write a little something for me to read, but in this case, um, in talking with Matt, he decided he would just address the council himself and, and uh, express his um, uh, his gratitude in working here. I know um, my sergeants and Ray and those of the uh, staff that have been here for a while have worked with Matt before uh, and are very enthusiastic about him coming on, relieving some of the stress we have with the um, with our staffing. And uh, I think this is going to be a, um, uh, a really, really um, uh, situation in which Matt can help us out um, both on the weekends and any other times that we have some staffing issues. And at the same time, relieve some of the stress our staff are receiving with uh, having to work extra hours and extra days. So uh, I think this is a great marriage and I think it's gonna work really well. I know that uh, when Matt was here before and had moved on, I always told him, if you have an opportunity to move back to central Iowa, I will hire you as a part-time officer. And I didn't think it would ever happen, but here we are. So I'm uh, really, uh, really gratitude. I have a lot of gratitude that he's taking advantage of that and it's going to be working for us. And I think it's going to be a real good benefit. Um, one of the things I've always been concerned with with part-time people is that when we hire them, I, we got to train them just like a regular officer that's going to be working with us. Um, but in this case, we don't have that issue. He's familiar with the town. He's got almost as much experience as I did when I first got here in 2004. So the police aspect of it, 
I'm comfortable that he knows what he's doing and what he's and what he's going to how he's going to handle himself. It's just getting up to speed on how we do things with the Nevada Police Department, how the county attorney does things. So we have um, we've got a, a plan together to get him trained up to speed pretty quick. So I don't think it's going to take a long period of time, and I think uh, uh, we'll get him out there and get him on the street. And I think uh, I think it's going to work out for everybody. So Matt, you want to come on? Good evening, Mayor, Council, Administrator Cook, how you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to take this opportunity real, real quickly to let you know that uh, I'm excited about coming back to this community. Um, it's been almost two years since we left. Um, quite frankly, uh, we had an opportunity to come back to Central Iowa and it worked out. And um, the safety director Martinez and I had this conversation uh, many, many times about uh, if the opportunity ever arose that I would get back to Central Iowa. Uh, I too didn't think it would probably happen like this, but it did. So um, we're going to take advantage of it. Uh, quite frankly, just to give you a little background about myself, it's very hard. I was thinking about it today. I graduated Academy in 1999. Um, we have a law enforcement academy, and that puts me over like 20 years of service. That's kind of scary, but um, I worked for several different departments, and I've currently uh, I've helped the city of Mount Dallas and Marion County for the last five or six years uh, prior to that. So um, my my experience goes back uh, all the way from a full-time to a part-time position. Um, when I was with the Motor Vehicle Enforcement for years, we worked, uh, I think I was assigned to like 10 or 11 different counties. So there was a little bit different uh, processes in each of those counties back then. Uh, there is uh, still some of that today, but um, the basic knowledge is there. We'll just get used to Story County and get back to speed. and. Uh, quite frankly, get their process down and all of that good stuff. But I wanted to thank you for the opportunity. Um, all of you in this room, I have a lot of respect for you uh, in this community. I'm excited to get back and give back to it in a, in a way that uh, is different from before, but at the same time, uh, anything that I can help to make this community better, I will. So thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> My honor to do the actual ceremonial part. So please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I am Matthew Marguson. Do you solemnly swear? Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the Constitution of the State of Iowa. And the City Code of Nevada, Iowa. And the City Code of Nevada, Iowa. And that I will faithfully and impartially. That I will faithfully and impartially. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Discharge all the duties. Discharge all the duties of the office of police officer. Of the office of police officer for the city of Nevada, Iowa. For the city of Nevada, Iowa is now or hereafter required by law. As now and hereafter required by law. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Congratulations, Matt. I was hoping to see one of your brightly colored button-down shirts again, though. <laughs> he said next time if you can hear him. Okay, is there, any, is there anyone else here to speak in the public forum? Seeing none, we'll close the public forum. Move on to old business. Um, old business A approved pay request number five for the wastewater treatment facility project phase two from Williams Brothers in the amount of $781,384.10. Move to approve. Second, Sandy and Brian. Any discussion? None. Council, please vote. Aye. Okay, that is approved. It takes us to item B discussion appropriate follow up on fireworks ordinance. Have the analysis in your packet and recommendation from staff? Yeah. Um, Everything I've seen just solidifies what I was thinking right from the get-go. I like where we've got it, and I'd like to keep it that way. Yeah, it seems to read from the history that PD did for us, and staff did for us with other towns and everything. I thought it was really a little amusing, some of the comments from some of the other police officers basically said, it doesn't matter what we do, you know, they're going to do whatever. And, that, and it really surprised me that some communities don't even don't even go on a call. Don't even it's like 
And it sounds kind of like that's the case here that we kind of chase our tails because we can't catch them red handed, so to speak. So, I mean, I think from what Ray said and what Chief said after the last, after the fourth this year, it wasn't really that bad, if I recall what. So, I mean, I know that it doesn't make everyone happy, but I think it's. I think it's, yeah, you too. I think where we're at is okay. Yep. I think I would agree. I think it's difficult to reopen a controversial issue when you have a policy that seems to be working. It's sort of like, why would we do that? With one person's concern, and rightfully so, we looked at it and yeah. came to the conclusion of leave this alone. By the looks of it, if we did lower it, his concern would be threefold if we get the same results as other folks are getting. Mm -hmm. So I think I kind of wonder we've got it pretty darn good right now. So do we need an official? We don't really need a motion. No, nope. nope. if there's no change and no motion, then we'll just move on. Anybody else have discussion? Mr. Dane, we haven't heard from. I said my piece last meeting. I agree with you guys. I think um, if you tighten the time frame, it, you know, you run the risk of non-compliance and then having it way more prevalent outside just those four days. And you know, we want everybody to follow the laws and you do everything you can, but sometimes it's just not doable. And I think if most people follow those four days and it's happening in a four day span, it's better than saying you can only do this one or two days and they're doing it for weeks at a time. So. Okay. Anything to add, Luke? Uh, well, I'd like to see it shortened, but it's pretty apparent that's not going to happen. But I, I think if it was shortened to two days or three days, it would probably be abided by. There'd be outliers like there has been now. Um, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to die on that hill, I guess. Thank you. And with that, we'll close discussion on that. Moving to new business. New business A, discussion appropriate follow-up on request from resident at 706 E Avenue regarding the utility bill. Yeah, I didn't exactly understand what the problem was. And the pictures are kind of fuzzy. Are they, sure. are they in the room tonight? No. Was that a no? Yeah, Karen, Karen said uh, he, she asked if he would, but he was not planning to come. Yeah, it's hard for me to... Hard for me to give a concession when they don't, I mean, they don't even want to come. I mean, I got questions I'd ask him, which would probably maybe help his case, but if he's not going to come to ask him, then I'm a little confused because from reading what I read, and I read it quite a few times, he's claiming misinstallation seven years after it was installed. Yeah. But then you know, usually when we get a concession, it's because it's we can prove it didn't go down the sewer because mm -hmm. we don't have to treat it on the backside. That's what we've normally done is give them the sewer credit. I would ask him if it really broke, then it would be running it flooding his basement, not running it through everything else in the house. So that's the problem I have with it that I don't know that something else that wasn't going on or I mean, but we don't know, we can't ask him. So that being said, I would, you know, I would make a motion to approve the recommendation to for six months. Give him a payment plan, and that's it. That was a motion, by the way. I'll second. Motion by Brian, a second by Dane. Further discussion? Hey, on a, a bit of a similar topic, it looked like the water usage spiked for several days. Um, 
what's the what i know we got a system that is supposed to catch those types of things but uh, how how quickly does that alert how quickly do we get that alert and how quickly do we forward it on to the the owner or the resident do we know that we get the alert only when they read the meters yeah basically monthly monthly and it's a month behind it's a month yeah, behind and as Don's going through those um as he prints the readings out he did notify the the resident that he saw an automatic jump in water. So as soon as those are printed and we have them and he goes through them, he doesn't notify them. Okay. I thought I thought we had something that could notify people more quickly than than that, but maybe I was wrong. That was the only thing I had. I don't know if there's any type of system we can get that that alerts people more quickly. I know, you know, some people just water their yard and they're gonna have a spike or something like that, but um, I don't know. It sounds like it's based off when the meters are read. Yeah. And there's probably not a way to get more frequent readings out of those. Because okay. we don't continually monitor meters. I mean, it's just. I guess I thought the meters were probably were all digital and we didn't have people actually walking around looking at meters anymore, but. Um... We don't. We don't. They still drive around, but they only take the readings once a month. Oh, it's not. You know, I, I guess I thought it was. I didn't even know they did that. I figured it was sent automatically anymore. No, you still have to drive around because there's a GPS that they have to collect on it. So they still have to be. I don't know what the, the exact distance is, but they have to be a certain distance away from the house in order to pick up what the what the meter is saying. Gotcha. Anything else? Um, sounds that it, it went down the drain. Do we know that for a fact that it did go down the drain? I asked. And he said it went down the drain. Okay. So it didn't flood his basement. Yeah. Right. No further discussion. Council, please vote. Aye. That is a pretty good to report, starting with city administrator. All right. Thank you. Uh, I didn't have a report that I sent to the uh, to you guys over the weekend. I was off last week. Um, but some of the meetings that I went to at the beginning on last Monday and the, the previous week where we had a pizza fest meeting, we also have another one of those tomorrow. Uh, had three virtual fly-ins with, with Grassley, Ernst, and Feenstra, and uh, they were talking to uh, several administrators in the county about, you know, what they can do to, to help with some of the struggles that we were having at a, at a local or community level. So that was great. Uh, FirstNet, we did we did um, get with FirstNet. FirstNet is a uh, uh, it's through AT and T. It's really for public service, uh, uh, public safety, but um, they also are extending it to other groups, other members in that that field. So um, brought it brought them here to talk to some of the other staff members about it to see if they'd be interested, and they're going to be reaching out to them if the, if they are interested. Also spoke with Mason at Alliant, and basically this was uh, an annual meeting that we really kind of just went over all the things that they could do to improve their service with us. And um, he kind of was asking what we really needed from them. Uh, but you know, the customer service is great. I just asked them if they could lower the prices and I, <laughs> we'll see if that happens. But um, the other thing that we did, uh, about a week and a half ago, we went over to the Ames Resource Recovery Center and talked with uh, Bill Smith about their situation and seeing if there's something that we can do or, or something. So we're still working through that. They're going to be sending us their study on what they need to do to improve their services in the next few years, and then we're going to try to figure out a game plan. So uh, really kind of what we discussed is maybe doing something joint and figuring out a, a way that 
we could meet both both sections of town and it would be kind of even for Ames and Nevada. That's for cleanup day? Yeah, for cleanup days, yeah. Make them more frequent. Other than that, um, I have nothing else unless you have questions for me. Okay, seeing so none, we moving on to my report. Um, Fieldhouse doing a ceremonial groundbreaking ceremony tomorrow before the ground is frozen and we can't do that. Um, so we're getting really close to where we need to be. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to celebrate. Um, so invite the community out to score park tomorrow at 5 p.m. So we'll do some dirt turn photos first before it gets too dark and then have a few remarks and there'll be some um, some food and stuff out there as well. So invite people out, out to that. Um, we still have the CAT grant that we're waiting on. Um, and then Tim got some good information about a Prairie Meadows one today that sounds pretty appealing as well. So we're continuing to, to bring in some of those last dollars. We're getting really close. Um, and then also I want to congratulate Almeco. They were, um, and I don't want to steal all Brenda's thunder, but had a, had a great event. Uh, and I'll let her talk more about uh, the award they were nominated for, but wanted to congratulate them obviously as our oldest employer in town. They mean a lot to the community and it's great to see them continuing to innovate into the new century. So, Council, any questions for me? Okay, then Council reports. Congratulations, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Okay, and we'll go ahead and back to Jeremy. I don't have anything else to add to my report that I turned in, but if any questions, any questions. Any questions for Jamie? I liked your written report. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Jeremy. Find us. And like the mayor said, I'd like to start my comments by uh, recognizing Elmeco. And so TAI is the Technology Association of Iowa. And a number of years ago, they added a category called Manufacturing Technology Company of the Year. And uh, so um, Almeco was in the company of Vermeer and Pella and Beer and Craig Tool. Uh, and El Mico. And, um, and so what an appropriate year uh, to nominate them for that award, considering the very unique things they're doing uh, to advance the agriculture industry. So um, we're going to keep looking for those opportunities to recognize Nevada companies. And, and while they didn't win, what an opportunity and a very, very full room of people uh, to tell the story of El Mico. And so it was Indeed, a, a fun evening to celebrate with them and to uh, put them out on a little bit broader uh, podium in the state of Iowa than they maybe have gotten before. So uh, we have posted that to digital media. If you see the clums or, or mark, uh, it, it was a neat honor to actually uh, move through the process and being selected as one of the five uh, for that honor. Uh, wanted to do a follow up. Um, I don't know if it was here or another meeting, people were asking me about Newton and what is our strategy uh, with the workforce that's being displaced at the end of the year uh, with the plant closure. Uh, those are terrible situations and it's never easy for communities to have to move through that process. And certainly Newton's no stranger uh, to this sort of activity. So we have been running uh, digital ads in the Jasper County Marketplace and actually getting some nice results in terms of people uh, going through to our job board. And so based on uh, that early interest, uh, we have made the decision to actually hold an in-person career fair uh, next week. So we're gonna do it Thursday night and then into the day on Friday through the lunch hour. And so I'm excited to announce that Mid-States, Almeco and Burke will actually be joining us for that event. 
Um, I'll be there as well, um, really talking about broad level transportation. So uh, what would folks need kind of for immediate opportunities to consider an alternative uh, to what they're doing? So we'll keep you posted on that. And again, I'm pleased uh, to, it's one thing to say you need people and then be ready to go take action and uh, commit some time and energy to those efforts. So I don't know what to expect, uh, but we've amped up our advertising. We're sending somebody down to hang flyers and, and we'll give this a, a good a good effort to try to bring some of those people up to our area for work. And another, I'll tag on a little bit too, also to the mayor's comments regarding the groundbreaking tomorrow. And uh, the CAT application, we anticipate hearing on that the first week of December. Uh, they had 17 requests, way exceeding their the request uh, the amount of data available um, so we are anticipating a, a smaller award we still have a really strong application so i feel really good about getting funding uh if you haven't heard that uh, we are uh the the project that got the the extra story county community founding uh, foundation grant so i think that says a lot about the project as well and uh, we'll be continuing to fundraise so if you know of people that haven't made their pledge uh, i'd encourage you to say now is the time to do so and we'll see you tomorrow night at the event any questions for me that i didn't answer in my report okay so let me off easy chief thanks brenda Hi, everybody. I uh, apologize for walking in late. We had a two-car head-on accident on Highway 30, so uh, minor injuries. So airbags certainly did the trick. Um, really uh, spent a little bit of time over in 102K Avenue. The neighbors are restless, and we wanted to reassure them that we're moving forward because uh, uh, nothing in that process is quick, and but we are certainly on the, uh, the right path, and they're super excited about uh, seeing that uh, nuisance be abated. Uh, the other thing is, uh, uh, just lost my train of thought. So um, we are seeing an uptick in calls. Uh, so far, the fires have been down because of the rain and stuff, but uh, uh, tis the season that we start seeing these home fires. So we encourage everyone to check their smoke alarms and uh, uh, not, you know, not do uh, risky behaviors, candles and stuff like that so that we can reduce the risk of home fires this year. So other than that, I'll take any questions. Thanks, Frank. Mr. McKinnis. I don't have anything other than my report. Uh, that, but that's it. Awesome. So, Anyone have questions for Rick? Thank you. Karen. Anything for Karen? Well, I've been gone for a couple of weeks, so I don't have a whole lot of report. So, um, at the next council meeting, we're receiving a full report on the projects we're working on. Um, with like came and found this evening, I did notice that we're getting very, very close on the downtown improvement. So, we're uh, for the last lap. Um, I got a pay request from a contractor, and he's indicating that there's about probably two hundred thousand dollars worth of work to finish up this month. So getting it wrapped up pretty quickly. Okay. Thanks, Larry. Aaron. Um, so just to piggyback on the 102K, I know that staff is aware of the procedure that we're going through. I don't know if council is, but um, the city did acquire the uh, tax sale certificate holders interest in that property and has is now moving forward with that foreclosure process. So there's a 90 day foreclosure notice window and that window closes mid December. So we're getting close. I think by the end of the year, we'll have 
we'll have that matter wrapped up, which will transfer title to the city's name, and then you can proceed with demo and getting that all cleaned up. So um, in case you weren't aware, that's that's where we're at with 102K. Okay. Awesome. Okay, anything else from council before we adjourn? Move to adjourn. Right. Okay. Uh, everyone and Jason, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, then we are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everybody.